Then Rabbi Komolafe will look at print media, missions and strategic evangelism tomorrow. Are we together? Have you stretched sufficiently? Alright. So, you know, I told you that the media is not just a means of communication or storing information as Wikipedia has presented it. I told you the media is every means or every avenue through which spirits and their realities are mirrored in the natural creation. And within the context of that definition, your thoughts are also media or a medium, right? And I told you there are two basic, basic strands through which spirit communications are trafficked before the media can even trap them. I told you it's sound and light. All of these borders on ministry, and I took time to explain what ministry was. Now I want us to look at um, the social media so that you look, you, you see how these things are applied. You know, the social media is also a mass media. You know, it's also a news media. I don't have time to disseminate or spell out all of those differences. But what's the social, what's the social media? It's a platform where social activities and information are trafficked, right? You know, everything you have, everything you know, you can define them based on your realm of operation. But if you want to have the best explanation, pictorial expression of any reality, you better define it from the highest realm. If you define it from the highest realm, it will impact on all of the other realms. I told you there are three realms of operations. You have the supernatural realm, which is the realm of God. You have the preternatural realm, which is the soulish realm, where angels, demons, and soulish activities are carried out. And I also told you we have the, the visible or the natural realm. That's where your body interacts. Where your senses, your five senses are relevant. So our definition will come from the deepest realm. And our definition is not informed by activity. It is informed by purpose. We are not defining the social media based on what is done on the social media. We are defining the social media based on the purpose and the cardinal essence of the social media as far as spirits are, are concerned. So I said the social media is a global strategic warfare platform. It's a global strategic warfare platform. It's a place where ideas, ideologies and philosophies of spirits are traded for the souls of men. Every activity on the social media is targeted at achieving one thing. To win your allegiance to the spirit that brings that inspiration. If they cannot completely secure you, what they will do is to scatter you. So on every opinion, on every discussion, you have several thoughts, several opinions and several patterns. Making your soul to become open and unguarded. And the moment your soul becomes open, it becomes easy for any spirit to find expression. There are three categories of people on the social media. The first is the spiritual and the informed. The spiritual and the informed see the social media as a tool, a platform, a corridor for strategic evangelism. Because they know the goal of the social media is not information dissemination. They know the goal of the social media is soul colonization. So everything they do on the social media is targeted at one thing, to win everybody they contact. So two, the spiritual and to the informed, it is a ground of strategic evangelism. They evangelize what they believe. And when I say evangelism, I'm not just talking about Christian. I've met people in the, I have friends everywhere. I've met a guy from the US that was talking to me about voodoo and new age. That's what he does on the social media. So he, he asks you of possibilities. Can you levitate in the air? Do you want to learn how to levitate? It's a simple thing. It begins to, just to get your attention. And it's a strategy of every spirit. That's what God uses too. The Bible said he has given us exceeding and precious promises so that by them we may escape the corruption that is in the world through lust, having become partakers of the divine nature. So when a spirit wants to woo you, they bring things that will fascinate your mind. Are we together? 
So, to the spiritual, the social media is a ground for evangelism. And then to the spiritual but uninformed, spiritual but uninformed, the social media is a place of leisure. So when they have uh, exhausted their day, their energy, then they just go there to chat with some friends, ping some persons, look upon some pictures, you know, just relieve themselves of stress. It's a ground of fun. They may be the guys leading prayers in church. They do the evangelism everywhere, win the souls. They are accurate with God. But they don't understand the, the purpose of the social media. So they just go there to while away time and they don't do anything. But statistics have shown that the world is more virtual than it's natural now. Every one of us here carry more activity in a virtual realm than in the natural realm. You spend at least six hours sleeping. You don't know where you are. And then most people here on the average spend three to five hours on Facebook or on WhatsApp or on Twitter every day. Most of your pictures are online. Most of your friends, you meet them online. So the virtual world is more real now than the natural world. How many of your friends' pictures have you collected to see in recent times? You check it up on Facebook. How many have you visited? You chat them on Facebook. If all your activity is channeled towards the virtual world, what makes you feel it is also not a ground to live out your faith? You are the one not doing it. There are so many others doing it. So you may be spiritual, but you are uninformed. And of course, the unspiritual, who obviously is uninformed, is a ground of indulgences. So that's where the guy gets all his girlfriends from. You know, he has his skill. There are pictures he uploads. Then he knows what to say. That's where the ladies get all their acquaintances from. So you see all the ladies now snapping and they are backing. It's called Facebook. My friends say it's Facebook, not Botox book. You wear the skimpy things and they do like this. Hello, how you doing? I'm fine. What's up? Ah, can we hook up here? Can we do it? It's a ground of indulgences. If you see the dirty things that happen, you'll be amazed. You know, when you are not a pastor, you may not understand. When you counsel with people, then you know how vulnerable humanity is. I've seen people that have become demonized through online visual romance with people they don't know. All kinds of things. It's a place of indulgences. The goal is so colonization. Every day you hit Facebook, just know that everything you will hear and see is targeted at your soul. And the goal is to change your orientation. If you stay there long enough, most of the things you believe, you will stop believing them. And even if you keep believing them, the energy to do will be weakened. If you think it's a joke, you are a preacher, you want to go for a meeting, or even prayer meeting that you come for, spend a long time on Facebook and come to church. The first one hour you may not ascend. And if the prayer ends, you will not touch anything, you go home. That's why sometimes we have, if we have meetings, we you off everything, keep one side, and you stay in the presence. Because you need to carry something to that place. The unspiritual and uninformed social media is a ground of indulgences. Having had the understanding, then the social media becomes the first point of apostolic invasion. There are different kinds of invasion. We have evangelical invasion, we have pastoral invasion, but apostolic invasion is a strange kind of invasion. You see, the evangelical invasion is just to come tell people about Jesus, get them one, and whatever happens to them, we thank God. Pastoral invasion is to open churches so that there will be kingdom systems. You come to the place, you know that there is a church here, at least on Sunday, let the people come and worship God, and then you teach them how to survive in life. If you have this need, do like this, this is the principle, how to survive. The apostolic is different. The apostolic is a governmental invasion. The word apostle is the word of a messenger with a mandate. It's an envoy. It's the representative of a government. It's like an ecclesia. They represent a government. So they carry the body of the government. When they come to hit a place, they don't just want you to believe what they believe. They want to compare you to become what they believe. That's the difference between the apostolic and all the other dimensions of the fivefold. The apostolic makes you what it believes. 
The job is not complete until you become. It is in the context of the apostolic services in the kingdom that colonization is possible. The word colonization is derived from colon. What is in the mouth will be will travel through the whole column until it reaches the end. So what is in heaven will be on earth. So if an apostle invades somebody on the Facebook, he is interested in that person becoming not just being one, but being built and being sent. His work doesn't end until that person begins to do what he's doing. That's why perhaps an evangelist can minister to 10 million people. An apostle may stay with 300 people all his life. An evangelist enters a city and the whole city gathers. But an apostle can come to a city and go to a cave and raise 12 people and leave. When he leaves, those 12 people will conquer their world. Jesus was not interested in the crowd. It was an apostolic operation. He raised 12 men and, and slipped out. And the Bible said, this be the men that turned their walls upside down. How do you engage apostolic invasion? Concentrate on one person until you damage the person's soul from darkness. <laughs> you, you know, sometimes you dress where you stand on Facebook. They are the ones that initiate the conversation. That's right. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Fine. Have you eaten? Have something to eat. Great. Where are you from? Some say, where are you chatting from? Makodi. How about you? You talk, talk. <laughs> I will show you some of my chats. Go and say, what are you doing online by this time? You must be toasting again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> toasting, right? Let's see toasting. And I began to toast. And I toasted her until she gave her life to Christ. When you finish that one, then you send them somewhere to be established. And then you, you leave them. Maybe after three weeks, they'll come and say, hello. There's no time again. I have people now. I will show you a lot of things online. That's why I deliberately got that. Some of them now have sales on WhatsApp. Every evening, 8 to 9, 100 people gather and they, they are doing a teaching on WhatsApp. They're in different places. I have, I have disciples in Afghanistan. I have disciples in Uganda. I have never gone there. Everything you do on Facebook, all your activities targeted at something. Get the soul attracted and won. So, we go for a meeting, the power of God moves, we upload it. It's not a show. Most people see what God is doing. So they now send you a chat. They, they, need, they have a problem. Okay. But before we talk about the problem, your soul is, is in jeopardy. Something has to happen to your soul first. They, some people may never talk to you until they see, ah, when they started seeing my upload. Ah, why not go? Uh, well done. What God is doing through you. God, great grace, great grace. From great grace, I have a challenge. We began to talk about the challenge. So the reason we go on Facebook is not because we want to show a new suit. We want to show the people that God is doing something and they are invited. That's the goal of the apostolic. When you have invaded the people, invaded their world, then you go to territorial colonization. The guy you now want, you tell him, okay, gather people every day and pray. And then you tell him, okay, today I will tell you I'll give you a prayer point. If you have gifts of the Spirit, that's where to manifest it. They are in a prayer group, then you begin to give word of knowledge to people. And after you give word of knowledge, then they begin to pray. Now, anything they want to do, they'll ask you for directives. So you'll be in Nigeria here, you have a share in India. That's territorial colonization. So you use the virtual world to affect the natural world. And there are places you can never go to. The reason Paul started writing letters is because he had this in view. The apostles that were with Jesus were with Jesus for more than 18 years before. After Jesus left, they sat for more than 18 years before Paul was converted. But the first book of the New Testament is the book of First Thessalonians. It was written by Paul. Paul understood how to send his message to a territory that he can't go to. That's why you're on the media. You're not on the media because you want to hear story. If I want to hear news, I know people to call. And they will tell me everything in five minutes. You are on the media because there is a war to conquer. There is somebody that you need to win in India that you can never reach. And you may never go to India in your life. So Facebook gives you a platform to preach in Afghanistan. You can go online and look for people, all the people in Afghanistan. And add them and begin to chat with them. 
You go online, you see a lady that is influential. Hi. Hi. They form for you, form. They think you are interested in them. When you chat for some time, then you enter another gear. And then, before you know, you will convert her influence into something productive for the kingdom. It's not every lizard on Facebook that sends you friend request. Go there with a mindset of colonization. It's an opportunity given to you. Darkness is maximizing it, but we are not. You click your phone, pa, the next thing somebody appears naked. Who is paying for it? That ad is not free of charge. It was paid for to pop up like that. They put something negative before you know you see on that it says sponsored post. They want hundred thousand people to see it. They have goals. They want to whet your your falling appetite so that demonic oppression can be strengthened. You have to invade the same territory with the same mindset. I've done a lot of extensive teaching on this part, but I don't have time today. Let me show you some of my my conversations so that you understand. And then I'll show you one of the works that um, one of my guys is doing. You are the reason. You don't just post things online. Ah, this is small. Come on, Lafay should have maximized it. I'm coming. Come on, laugh it. Come on, laugh it. Come on, enlarge this thing. These are the kind of things we post. And it's not a show. I want to show you why. Because of this post, I will show you two of my conversations also. Enlarge it, zoom it down. Okay, I, I've gone far. Start from the down one. Mm -hmm. Enlarge it. Mm -mm. All right. Enlarge this one. Them. This, are the, this is a power move. It was in BSU. These like are the kind of things you upload. Then the one down also is administration. You flood the internet with it. Those who are hungry for God, they will contact you. And then anybody you contact, you first of all go and check your profile. And then say, Are you a pastor? No, I'm not. When I finish the conversation, I'll say, I'm a preacher. Because some you say you are a pastor, they will run away. Go next. There are many like this. This is a friend of mine. Somebody I, I discipled. This is his Facebook group. It's called Epignosis Cell. It has um, how many members now? Let's push it down. His name is Owina Sunday. 82 participants on this group that he teaches every evening. Go to the next picture. He has classes every evening, one hour. No, this one is my modern market invasion. Taking the gospel to the market. The people say, ah, the market. How did he gather people in the market? Then they want to find out. But go next, go next. Let me show Ovina's, uh, this one is NYC orientation camp. Go next. Next. This is NYC state conference. This one is in Jalingo. This tent here. This one is in Kogi State. So this guy, this is his group. There's another teaching. There's one that he did a teaching. Oh, didn't I didn't copy it. Okay, I didn't copy it. Do a teaching, people follow. He just comes, you're online. Put this symbol. And then everybody online put, Father, let's pray, begins to teach. And then you keep teaching, keep teaching, keep teaching. And then people are sending in testimony. It's praying for people, they are sending in testimony. That's one. Let me show you my apostolic invasion now. Ah, you have made these things more even. Mm -mm. How did this picture come here?
Where is the new folder? Yeah, let me show my people something. Meanwhile, come on. This thing is much. Huh? And you take next. Look at my conversation with this this person. See, they see you, they want to talk with you and all of that. I want to show you most of the things you have wasted. Most of the chances you have wasted. Some people come to you, they are interested in you, yes. And what is wrong? But what you make out of it depends on how profitable you are to the kingdom. The young lady said, hi. Hey. First of all, she waved. Now say, hey. I say, hi. Say, how are you, sir? Say, great. Now, why did sir come? She saw my profile. Go next. Is that the next one? This thing jumped to. He said, help me. It's all about our family. Things are not well. Death happens after every year. No jobs. Financial problem and complicated diseases. I said, okay, but first of all, how committed are you to God? This one I approached like this because she was the one that got interested in what I was doing. Go next. I said, she said, I love Christ and I'm born again. I'm saved. All the family in fact. I said, it's deeper than that, my sister. Go next. <laughs> Tell me, Papa. <laughs> I said, there are peculiar sins that are tied to each bloodline that gives demon access to manifest manifest immorality for instance for instance she said talk to me papa <laughs> go ahead so for deliverance to be permanently affected these things must be addressed i will begin with i will begin with you when your case is handled then you can become the intercessor of your home she said do it papa go next <laughs> i said forget the papa thing I'm, I've not even started prophesying to you. I'm just enlightening you. The, pro, the process of deliverance. You say, okay, man of God. <laughs> I now say I will chat you up by 9 p.m. These are the activities online. 9 p.m., somebody say, hey, here I am, man of God. You see that this person is not only interested in what man of God can do. I said, sister. He said, yes. She said, talk to me, sir. I, I didn't say anything. She come back. Good morning, sir. Man of God, please don't, please don't reject me. I'm checking her desire. Next. Okay. You now say, I now say, what do you want the Lord to do for you? She went back to her papa. Say very many things. Go next. I said, sister. She said, yes, sir. I said, have you done what I asked? Because I told her earlier to break up from all of those sexual things. She said, yes, sir. I said, tell me what you did. Next. Come on, laughing. Okay. He said, I prayed and repented for the immoral sins I committed. I said, okay, where are you now? You say, I'm in Uganda. I'll let you know when I'm free. Okay, sir. When will that be? I now said, you must call and break up the sex. I just perceived that she had not done what she said. I said, you must call and break up all the sexual relationships you have. Tell everybody you are having se sex with that you are no longer interested. She said, okay, sir. That's the person that said she has done it before. She said, I will do that. I said, it's not enough to confess to God, but you must break up those relationships. Then I will pray for you. She said, I will do that immediately. And I said, do you have something came to my spirit again? Do you have anything to do with a married man? Go next. She said, no. I waited. As I was typing, she saw I was typing. She too now sent something. 
He said, but he told me that the wife left him. He said, Papa, I'm ready to leave you. I said, I'm seeing you involved with a married, a married, with a married man. I'm seeing you involved with a married sometimes. That's why I asked you. You must never do that. It will destroy you. But she felt I was just speculating. And now began to describe. She now said, It's true, Papa. I said, I'm seeing a man who is far older than you, dark in complexion, and a little bit fat with rough beard. He is only interested in sex, and you are not only his, you are not his only victim. He said, It's true, Papa. I said, You can't even proceed with your education because your mind is getting dull and you lack favor and adequate sponsorship. You begin to engage the gifts of the spirit because their soul needs to open. When you describe the man she's having an affair with in Uganda, she will take you serious. I say, in fact, you don't have interest in reading, reading because your mind is now, dub, is now clouded with other things. And when you try to read, you either sleep off or distract yourself with your phone. Your life needs to turn around. She said, help me, Papa. All is true. Go next. This is what we call apostolic invasion. It's not to ask, have you eaten? How does that add value to the kingdom? What are you doing now? I'm lying down. <laughs> she said, <laughs> she said, she said, I will. I said, wait a minute. Do you stimulate yourself for sexual feeling? And as well with a female friend of yours, she said, no, I don't understand this one, Papa. Mm-hmm. Go next. Hi. You know, sometimes you have to clear people's doubt. If not, their soul will not open. When you pray, it will bounce on their heart and come back. You say, I don't understand this one. I say, why do I always see you touching your breast, especially when you are naked? She said, yes, Papa. I do that. It's true. Now her heart is open to be prayed for. When you pray for this kind of person, you can now give them instructions. They become your disciples and they can colonize their world. This is why we spend time on social media. I said, there are a lot of things you need to avoid. She said, I'm ready, Papa. I said, you are a good person, but your neighborhood is corrupt. I'm seeing abortions, children out of wedlock, rampant immoral activities, and violence among young boys. I'm even seeing rape among young girls by young boys. Go ahead. The lady now says, we need deliverance, Papa. It's true. I say, I'm seeing that you have also done that a couple of times. And it's the reason you have health challenges. I'm seeing that you have... Okay. She said, yes. I said, and you also have stomach pains from time to time. She said, yes. I said, it's well. She said, thanks, Papa. I said, when... When you have done what I have asked, I can pray for you and we'll talk about your family. That's one. There are many cases like that. You win people to God. Go to the next one. Just forward there's another lady. I, I say I oh, should do prayer for her and all of that. There is another one. Hi. I said hi. Say how are you? I said I'm fine. Next. He said, where are you? I said, Makodi. You school here? I said, yes. <laughs> what course? Physical chemistry. What level? I said, 700 level. <laughs> Next. She now laughed. I said, funny. He said, how many years course is that? I said, that's 100 level PhD. She said, okay. I now said, it's a three years program. She said, no wonder. I, she said, you are a pastor. I said, no. He said, but, your prof- but it's on your profile. Go ahead. I said, really? I've not seen it. He said, yeah. Are you a doma? I said, yes. He said, okay. What part? I said, I'm from your local government. I want to enter what of knowledge we have again. He said, you don't know my local government. I said, I'm from your local government. He said, you are funny. I said, okay, I'm from a body book. And I said, I'm, am I asking too many questions? That's what she said. I said, no, your turn. Answer your question. She said, ask me. Go ahead. I said, the questions are already there. In fact, you ask them. So kindly type answers. She now, and now smile. She said, I'm waiting. I said, no, I'm the one waiting here. You engage them. Their heart gets stimulated. She said, I'm a graduate of accounting from Ogbadibo. That's the local woman I told her. She now said, 
finished from BSU this year. I said, thumbs up. Why are you awake? Hmm. That's the lady. I see I was reading for a while now. I just needed some mental ventilation. That's why I'm chatting. Why whom? Next. Nothing though. I said it's well. So what are you doing now? She now, when I was writing, she was writing. She said, I thought you were toasting a lady. The person you called pastor. I will tell you why she has this kind of mentality. After I met her. Go ahead. So I thought you were to, I thought you were toasting a lady. The question I now asked her, what are you doing? She now answered. I said, I'm chatting with you. I said, no, no. That's not what I meant. What are you doing for now? Guess you are waiting service. She said, project still. And then awaiting service. Go next. I said, okay. Nice meeting you. But by the way, you have been asking questions. Now it's my turn to ask you. She said, okay, ask. I said, tell me one positive impact you've had on the people around you in the last six months and how you have transformed their lives. <laughs> the lady now, suddenly the energy level changed. You know, the first time we were talking, she thought it was a toast. After I have secured her attention, I now struck her with a question. So quickly she gathered herself. She want to give me an answer from her mind that she doesn't believe. You see, I came out of a family that we are very poor, but regardless of that, I felt it was right to take up my destiny. I stood out despite all odds with God, with God's help all the way. This had, this had made people around me believe that God is a destiny changer. That's an impact on people. Our confidence, our confidence has made people believe that God is a destiny changer. And, <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. I want to show you something. I said, thumbs up. She said, what next? I said, what good and personal life transforming activity have you practiced consistently for the past six months? She said, I have been a positive impactor by sharing my life experience with people. You see that she has nothing. These are suddenly down on her how empty her life is. So she's trying to use everything possible to validate what she has been doing. With people who are in similar situation and assuring them that God's goodness can come over time, make them understand and all of that. Move on. I said, okay, what do you have to offer your world? You see, I see myself as a woman of purpose. And as such, I only see myself as an instrument fit to be used to touch lives in the way God has deemed it fit. <laughs> you see, human being, what they are not doing, what they don't believe. They say it so that they can meet up your requirements. Now, this thing is, is beginning to choke her. Because what she's saying is not her reality. I said... I said... Do you think your current lifestyle reflects what you said? Honest answers, please. Do you think your current lifestyle... Because I was going somewhere. She said, I think so, though I'm not impeccable. I said, these answers you've given me are from your head, not your heart. He said, and, and if it's not exactly, I deem to be true, to be a true reflection in ways possible from my heart. I said, okay. I said, sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but it's a bit difficult for me to believe your last answer. The next thing is, I want to sleep now. So when you stay online for long with somebody, is either you are floating in the person's direction or the person is floating in your direction. And the people of the world will never compromise. If you don't go their way, they will cut off from you. You are the only one that shuts down your standard to follow them and lose your value system. This is the, this is the tussle on the social media. Go next. I said, wait a moment. You have not even allowed me... I said, wait a moment. You are running away. You've not, you've not even allowed me to land. She said, it's okay. I said, it's not fair. She said, I'm not. Just want to go to bed. Go ahead. I said, I wasn't telling you what I feel about you. Okay, I wanted telling you what I feel about you. She said, I may, I may not seem all good as a Christian, but I believe in the existence of God Almighty. She's beginning to come to her true self. I said, hmm. He said, and I said, don't preempt what I want to say. 
you may be wrong. She said, it's true. I said, but would you like to know what I feel? She said, okay, say it. There's no much interest again. I said, I think you are actually a very good person. Your greatest strengths are kind-heartedness, respect for people's feelings, tolerance, and meekness. She said, you think so? You know, when you hear people sometimes, I say, I also think you have always loved God from your childhood. But the problem is that you've not really been taught the ways of God. So you just have your ideas of what God likes and dislikes. You actually try to please him, but you find yourself doing things you know he doesn't like. And you feel bad. It seems you can't help it. She said, you think so? I say, I also think you have always loved... Okay, okay, sorry. She said, and I see you are also a pastor. And she laughed. She now said, you are right. I fear I'm the worst person. This is the good Christian that is impacting life. The good Christian now feels she's the worst person. I said, you are actually the type of person that can endure pain for peace to reign. And you can't hurt people. She now said, who are you? When you start discerning them, you leave the superficial side. And then you begin to speak to their reality. If you can't achieve that, you can't win any soul. Because on social media, they are not under your influence. You can't lure them. You must learn to talk to their spirit. Go next. Let's round up this one. I said your environment have actually influenced you negatively. But you are a good person on the inside. You may be doing what your friends are doing, but you are not like them. She said, hmm. I said, you don't need to hide in the dark anymore. The Lord sees everything, including your night activities. You don't know the meaning of that night activities. But the lady knows. I said, but beyond your wrongs, Jesus sees your heart. And that's why he protects you, even when you're on the wrong path. Go next. Come on, laughing. Let's round up. I said, by the way, I think you are a very domestic lady. Just thinking aloud. He said, just that I do things that I don't like. Thanks, bye. And now said I'm a preacher. So, we now scheduled an appointment and then we got to see. After we went, we sat in symbols and I spoke with her and the lady wept like a child there. That was where she repented for the first time. Then the next day she came back. I now asked, hope you are okay. She said, I'm good. You? I said, I'm okay. I said, what's wrong? She said, she told me about the guy she in fact, as at the time I was talking to her, she was living in the house of a guy. But after our conversation, she went and discontinued from what they were doing. And the guy couldn't take it. She now told me, he has, he has, he has to quit me because of sex. That's what my boyfriend said today. He wants sex continuously. This world is doomed. For the first time, it downed on her where she was standing. And she broke up. And the guy broke up. She refused to continue what they were doing and the guy broke up. So she has been separated from her world. She said, I'm ready to accept Christ fully. This is why I started chatting with her. That was the statement I was waiting for. I'm ready to receive Christ fully. What started with hi. And I said, great, I shall do a meeting with you later. She said, yes sir, please help me. You bring them to a point where God becomes the only hope. If you can't win people on the social media, then you shouldn't be there. Do you know the prayer Jesus prayed? Jesus said, he's not praying for God to take us away from here. He said we should remain here. And then he's praying for the... When he was talking about the apostles, he said he's not praying for God to carry them from the world. He said they should remain in the world. He said, and this prayer includes the people that we believe because of them. The reason you are here is so that through your life, people will believe in God. That is the same reason why you should be on the social media. If people cannot believe in God through you on the Facebook, then your life on Facebook is a lie. Because your life on earth is to be a witness. The question is, all the places God gives you opportunity to find expression, are you a witness? The social media is becoming the most predominant, the most predominant realm of human oppression. And you must count on the social media. And the only way you will count is to unveil Jesus. Everybody on the social media is unveiling a commodity. 
The question is, what are you unveiling? When you flaunt your body, it's not your body you're unveiling. You're opening a gate for a spirit. It's deeper than what you think. It's a time for everybody to awoken to the responsibility of pure apostolic Christian living. You must not have all the gifts in the world. I was preaching the other day, I told them, people are asking for word of knowledge. You have not won a soul. I asked some of the brothers that wanted killing me. They said, word of knowledge, word of knowledge. I said, this is the fifth month of the year. How many souls have you won? The guy have not won as much as two souls. What do you need word of knowledge for? You want to be telling yourself the things that have happened to you. So we, our priorities are wrong. It's for a show, it's for a pride. You don't have body for soul winning, but you need word of knowledge. What do you need it for? Most of us, as far as heaven is concerned, we are wasting. And we are wasting. But the resources God has put in you, you are not using them. Some of you ladies here, more than 500 boys have told you hi in the last three months on Facebook. You have not responded to one of them. You, you always think about yourself. You don't know what you represent. But if you are working in the bank now, you are running after everybody because you want to advertise the product. If you are working or selling something in the market, you are running after everybody because you want to advertise the product. It does not down on you that you are a carrier of Jesus. And Jesus wants himself to be revealed to the world through you. The Bible said, in that day, don't bother what you will say. He said, open your mouth, I will feel it. What? Bow your heads. 